In a group of 200 students, we see that 40 of them are taking English. 50 of them take math and 10 of them are taking both. Okay, so if a student is selected at random, find the following probabilities. Now we're going to draw a Venn diagram. Okay, and sometimes before I get started here, sometimes students say, well, this says 40 are taking English. That is a fact. No more. This is exactly 40 are taking English. Exactly 50 take math. Exactly 10 take both. So these 10 people are part of this and this. It's not an additional 10. If this was additional, then that actually would mean if, 10, if a different 10 are taking both, that would mean actually 50 are taking English and that would be a lie. Okay, so literally 40 in total take English, 50 in total take math, and some additional information, 10 people take both. All right, so if a student is selected at random, let's find the following probabilities. Well, I'm going to first draw the Venn diagram. Not required, but it, if you can draw a Venn diagram, and notice we have two groups of people, we've got those taking English and those taking math. <clears throat> and there's an overlap there between them. Now, I'm using E and M. I guess I, I got a little sloppy over here. I wrote the word out, English. This means the probability that the <clears throat> randomly selected student takes English. Okay, so that English is associated with this circle, capital E. And I'm going to make a note that this is not really part of the Venn diagram, but the English circle, it's going to have two numbers in it, one here and one here, has to add up to 40. That's just a little cheat note. It's not really part of the Venn diagram. Just make a note that that circle has to add up to 40, and the math circle has to add up to 50. <clears throat> so other than my little cheat notes here, the number 40 and 50 will not show up in this diagram. But the number 10 certainly will. We want to get the, the, uh, the group with the, you know, the biggest overlap section, um, which is this is the only overlap section. And that number 10 can go directly here in the football region. Okay, so 10 of them take both. That's the only region you can be in where you're in both the E circle, the English circle, and the M circle, which is the math circle. Now, do not write 40 here. This circle has to add up to 40, so I'm going to put a 30 right there. Now it adds up to 40. The math circle has to add up to 50, and we already have 10 there, so I'm going to put 40 there. And to complete it, we know that the number of elements in the sample space is the total number of students. We're choosing one student out of the group of 200. So the entire rectangle has to add up to 200. So we have 30, 40, and another 40. That's 80. So out here is 120. Now it all adds up to 200, the 120, 30, 10, and 40. And we can find all probabilities very simple from this diagram now. All right, the probability um, of taking English is, and I'm going to revert back to capital E for being English. I should have called this the probability of E. Um, the number of elements in the English set and then over the number of elements in the sample space. So we already know that since we have a group of 200 students and we're choosing one, there's 200 possibilities. So every one of these probabilities is going to have a denominator of 200, assuming you don't simplify or, or cancel. So this is going to be, number of elements in E is 40 over 200, which is one-fifth. But for the upcoming exam, I don't require that you reduce these fractions. I'd like to see that we have 200 as all of the denominators, although it's perfectly fine to reduce. One-fifth, and that's 20%. So there's a 20% chance that if you randomly select somebody from this group of 200 students, 20% of the time that student will be taking uh, English. I, don't, I may have said math earlier, but 20% chance of taking English. Math will be the number of elements in the M set. 
it over the number of elements in S, which is going to be 50 over 200, which if we wanted to reduce, that's 1 fourth, which is also 25%. So 50 out of, and we didn't need the diagram for that because we knew that 50 of the 200 are taking math. So 50 over 200 would be the probability, and back to English, it was 40 over 200 giving us the probability. Now, the probability of English and math, well, the way of saying that would be the probability that you're in the E set intersected with the math M set. That's what this is, English and math. And is the intersection, or which we'll get to next, is the union. And how many elements are there in E intersect M? Well, E intersect M is the football region right here, which is 10. And we were actually given this number up here. 10 take both, English and math. So this would be 10 over 200, which if you reduced it would be 1 over 20, which is 5%. <clears throat> and lastly, how many of them take English or math? This is the only one that I'd say is not totally trivial. We can't just look up here and grab a number for the numerator. We need to know, let's see, this would be the probability of E union M. E union M. That's going to be the number of elements in E union M, which is the figure eight shape over the number of elements in the sample space. That we know is 200 in the denominator. How many elements are there in E union M? You cannot simply add 40 and 50 to get 90 because there are 10 students that you're counting twice. These 10 that take both, 10 of these students take math. 10 of these students take English. You can't count them twice. So, all we do is take the 30, the 10, and the 40. Make sure you include the 10 once. Essentially, we're taking the 40 in the English circle, 40, and then the additional 40 that are only taking math. I mean, taking math, but not English. So, 30 and 10 is 40, and 40, it's going to be 80 over 200. E union M is the figure eight shape. Everything inside that, count up all the numbers, just count them each once. 30, 10, and 40. So that is the answer. That's the probability. If you reduced it, let's see, that would become 8 over 20, 4 over 10, 2 over 5, 40%. <clears throat> but this is fine. For the, for the upcoming exam, you don't need to reduce them. I actually like to see all the denominators being 200. Makes it easy to... Um, well, for one thing, it makes I know you, you understand what the number of elements in the sample space is. And I know you know how to reduce fractions. All right. Well, let's look at an easy way to compute this. There's a formula where we did not have to draw this, this picture. And let me see. Before I move on, I'm going to do one more thing that's not asked for in this. If I wanted to do this Venn diagram with instead of putting the counts, the number of people in each section, but I wanted to use the um, percentages so they add up to 100%. Well, in that case, it would have been really easy. I would have just written this 120 over 200. This one would be instead of 30, it'd be 30 over 200. And this one would be 10 over 200. And this would be 40 <clears throat> over 200. Since I wrote them as fractions, they would all add up to 1. Because notice they all have the common denominator, 200. And notice the numerators, then if you add them together, 120 plus 30 plus 10 plus 40, it all adds up to 200 over 200 which is equal to one. So I could have put the decimal points or the percentages in there just as well, but we need to know that it'll always add up to 100% or 1.0 if you use decimals, where this method of doing it, they all just are actually the number of counts. They could add up to any, any you know, these don't have to add up to, well, in this case, they have to add up to 200, but the number of elements in the sample space could be any number at all. 
All right, so number 10, the counting or addition formula for sets. All it's looking for is finding the probability of the union of two events. Given two events, E and F, the probability of E union F is given by the following formula. And there's two ways to do it. First, um, we can write this as, we can do it, we can use either probabilities or number of elements in the set. So, first I'll just use probabilities, make it nice and easy. The probability of E union F is the probability of E plus the probability of F. Now, if there's overlap in the two events, this could potentially add up to over 100% because some of, the, some of it might have been counted twice, so we have to subtract the intersection. <clears throat> and notice how similar this is to the formula we've already seen. The number of elements, ah, I, wrote, I wrote intersection instead of union, there. The number of elements in E union F is the number of elements in E plus the number of elements in F minus the number of elements in their intersection. And this works, you know, they're, they're parallel formulas, one using the count, the number of elements, the other using the probability. And it all comes down to, for each one of these probabilities, you know, the probability of E union F <clears throat> is the number of elements in E union F over the number of elements in the sample space. So if I just took, if I divided each four, each of these four terms in the top formula, if I divided each one of them by the number of elements in the sample space, I would get the probabilities. If I divide this by the number of elements in the sample space, I get the probability of E union F. If I divide this by the number of elements in the sample space, I get the probability of E. And similarly with this one and with that one. All right, et cetera. I could do that for all, <clears throat> all these three as well. All right, so let's, let's apply this. <clears throat> in the ABC jungle, the probability, and I hope these numbers are, are terribly wrong, the probability of a child contracting malaria is 45%, 0.45. The probability of contracting measles is 65%, 0.65. And the probability that that child contract, contracts both is 20%. So we have two, unfortunately, they both begin with the, word, with, with the letter M. So I'm going to use capital M to represent the probability of malaria and a, a lowercase m to represent, I usually use capital letters, but um, I'll use lowercase m to represent measles the probability of measles. Okay, the probability of contracting both is that, which both would be the intersection of malaria and measles. What's the probability that a child will contract malaria or measles? Union, capital M, so what's the probability that the, stu that, the, that the child will be in this set, the union? All right, let's use the formula first, and then we'll draw the Venn diagram, which will be very simple. Well, going back to this up here, the probability of E or F, malaria or measles, is equal to the probability of, oops, I'm going to change the letters. The probability of M union M, malaria or measles, is the probability of malaria plus the probability of measles uh, minus the probability of both, which would be M intersect little m. <clears throat> so this formula is exactly the same as this. We just changed the letters. The events were E and F. Now they're capital M and lowercase m. And we're given these values. Probability of malaria, 0.45 plus 
measles, 0.65. Notice that those two together add up more than 100%, so that could never be the correct answer. Now we have to subtract 0.20. And the answer is 45, that'd be one, that'd be 1.10 minus 0.2. I think we get a 90%. I'm gonna have to double check this. 45 and 65 would be 110 minus 20, which would give us a 90, and you just keep the decimal point in the same place, or 90%. <clears throat> All right, so the Venn diagram, since we're using percentages, the entire Venn diagram has to add up to 100% inside, or 1.0. So the four regions here, 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 and here have to add up to 1.0. So capital M, lowercase m, and just as a cheat note, I'm gonna put that the, the whole M circle, capital M, has to add up to 0.45, and the lowercase m circle has to add up to 0.65. So the, the, one, the only number in this problem that I can just take right out and put into the diagram is this one right here, 20%. The probability of getting both is this intersection region here. So it's 0 0.20. And now I know since the big, the, the capital M circle has to add up to 0.45, we have 0 0.2 here, it would be 0 0.25. 0 0.25 plus 0 0.20 adds up to 0.45. And now what do I put here? it'd be 0 0.65 minus 0 0.20, <clears throat> 0.45. So now 0 0.20 and 0.45 adds up to 0 0.65. And as we already knew, the probability of big M union little m is the probability of being inside the figure eight. We already computed. What do we get if we add all three of those numbers up? 25, 45, and 40, 0.9, 90%. We already computed that which means that outside, the only number missing would be 10%, just like that. So the probability that that a child doesn't get either of the two diseases is only 